Welcome to Words of Europe, a handy and informed dictionary to understand the European Union universe, brought to you by BLEST, the lab in European studies at Bocconi University, Milan. The European Union is a fascinating entity. It is populated with challenges and animated by efforts to keep the political and the legal unity of a diverse group of peoples and states, often in times of global challenges. A good way of navigating this intriguing universe is to understand some of the key words used to describe the Union, its guiding principles and its attributions. In each episode of Words of Europe, a blessed researcher will introduce the meaning of those key words, leading us to better understand the underlying tensions and challenges. Today, Fulvio Ristuccia, PhD candidate in EU law at Bocconi, illustrates the meaning of economically active citizen. Fulvio Ristuccia helps us to understand the role and rights of union citizens in the EU, understood as a community of individuals engaged in a dynamic, open and challenging transnational society. All nationals of European Union member states are union citizens. While this is an accessory status additional to national citizenship, important rights are attached to it. Among these, probably the most important and cherished one is the right for all EU citizens to move and reside freely across all EU member states, subject to the limitations and conditions established in the treaties and in secondary law. Since all EU citizens have the right to move and reside freely, across all member states of the European Union, why is it important to be economically active? Because the right to move and reside freely across the European Union differs in conditions and scope for economically active and inactive citizens. Indeed, first of all, the conditions for residents beyond three months differ for these two categories of European citizens. Economically inactive citizens need to own sufficient resources not to become a burden on the host state finances, and they also need to have comprehensive health insurance. Economically active citizens, on the contrary, only need to be economically active, which means they need to be either workers or self-employed persons. Moreover, they have different sets of rights, Economically active citizens enjoy greater access to equal treatment, especially in matters of welfare, benefits and social assistance. On the contrary, economically act inactive citizens can only avail themselves of social assistance if they fulfill the conditions established in Directive 2004-38, which are, as I said before, sufficient resources and comprehensive health insurance. Economically active citizens, moreover, are more protected against expulsion and also they are more, they're protected in principle from day one of, the, of their stay, which means they can also in principle access social assistance from day one of their stay. But who is an economically active citizen? There is no definition in the treaties or secondary law. So it was the case law of the Court of Justice of the European Union to develop a European definition of worker for the purposes of free movement. In this regard, the rulings in Levin and Lori Bloom are particularly important. In the latter case, the court established that in order to be a worker, a person needs to perform for a certain period of time services for and under the direction of another person in return for remuneration. In Levin, the court had specified that the activity cannot be too marginal and ancillary to be considered genuine and effective. Now, this criterion is not a definite quantitative threshold, and it is quite vague because it does not depend, as I said, on the amount of time worked. For example, the court held, or better, it did not exclude that someone could be considered a worker even though she worked only four hours per week under free movement law. Now, a definition of self-employed persons, on the contrary, does not exist. A positive definition. It is drawn in the negative from that of worker. When subordination is lacking, one is a self-employed person. 
Now, why it is problematic that there is a distinction between economically active and inactive? First of all, because of the definition of worker and also by reflection that of self-employed may be too vague. As I said, the criterion of genuine economic activity is not such to establish clear boundaries between the two categories, the two statuses. So its contours become very blurred and it is difficult in some cases to establish who is economically active. So for example, we might ask ourselves how many hours it is too few to be considered a worker. The other problem is the fact that the definition of worker is exclusionary. Indeed, it excludes first all kind of non-remunerated activities. For example, if we think about unpaid traineeship, this may be very problematic because unpaid trainees may be called to perform the same activities as paid trainee, but they would not be considered workers. It may also be exclusionary and discriminatory against women if we think, for example, about unpaid care work, which is predominantly performed by women, which is not considered work for the purposes of free movement. And finally, the fact that the definition is so broad and also vague means that when a person is engaged in particularly precarious activities, she may find herself in an uncertain situation. And it's, it is difficult in these situations to establish whether she is an economically active citizen or whether she falls in the less protected and less privileged status of economically inactive citizen. This may cause arbitrary dividing lines and discrimination in the distribution of rights and risks further marginalizing those who are already at the fringes of the labor market. This was Words of Europe, a podcast about the key words that describe Europe from BLEST, the lab in European studies of Bocconi University, Milan. To be notified about new episodes, follow Words of Europe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Spreaker.